Hello everybody, this is your friend Dave Gadwi and welcome to one more exciting episode of Care Nation. Please join hands and welcome one of the business expert, one of the sales expert based out of Australia, John Smybird. Hey John, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, Dave. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Look forward to oh, talking pleasure. to your audience. Oh, thank you so much. Pleasure is all ours. Thank you so much. Uh, for for taking the time out from your busy schedule, it's I'm really excited personally because sales is something which is very close to my heart. I have been talking to a lot of people doing some of the workshop, and people who are watching for the first time, let me tell you guys, Care Nation is all about caring for you and your future. What we do is we bring the expert around the globe, like John. We did interview with uh, Tony J Hughes. He also best selling author for the book called The Joshua Principle, brilliant book. Uh, I think apparently they work very closely together and John has actually shared some of the best ideas with uh, Tony who has made it really big on LinkedIn and social media. We've done some other interviews as well with Dan Locke, Evan Carmichael. So yeah, we're all about giving value. So if you're watching this and if you have questions, please leave it in the comment box below on YouTube so that we'll answer them John would answer those questions for you today. We only have 30 to 40 minutes, so make the most out of this opportunity. So, John, why don't you tell us a little more about yourself before we get started into how anybody can become a sales master? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. Uh, I, you know, I, I think of myself as a pretty boring person, but you know, a, lot of, a lot of people love to hear the story, so here it goes. I, I've been in sales for, you can see the age, you know, 40 something years um, and uh, I started with IBM back in 1970 uh, and have worked through uh, mainly four big IT corporates so IBM, NCA, Unisys and Fujitsu uh, and about 14 years ago I thought I've had enough of the big corporate world I'm going to go out and do some consulting on my own. Um, that career I had through to senior executive roles in, in those organisations was absolutely wonderful. And I tell you, uh, if, if anybody's thinking uh, they want to develop their sales career or thinking, do I really want to be in sales or not, if you commit yourself to sales and commit yourself to your customers, the career is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So, um, yeah, in, in the last 14 years I've been doing a lot of um, Consulting, helping organisations with their sales programs, uh, driving change, uh, looking at how they transform. The world is changing dramatically. Um, now I don't know India, but I can tell you through uh, Australia and US, Europe, and, and all my friends that I'm working with there, the level of change is just accelerating so dramatically uh, that, that sale, organisations in the B2B sales world, world I'm working, working with are really trying to get their minds around how they adapt to this change, this tsunami of change coming through. Uh, and if they don't learn very quickly on how to ride that tsunami, get the surfboard and hop up there and ride it, they'll drown. So uh, there's there's some real big opportunity out there for people like Tony Hughes and myself and others to help organisations uh, go through that change. So that's what I'm all about. Fantastic, fantastic. And I, I love what you said, that sales is a beautiful, beautiful place to be in. And I also, you know, some of my audience already know my history. Uh, I've been in sales for 15 years, but it was not until last two years that I truly committed to becoming really good in sales and start practicing. Again, I don't claim to be a, an expert like, you know, you are who, who has been a veteran in this. None of us are, none of us are experts. We're all learning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really humble, though. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, they know my story. And um, the, the biggest mistake I personally made was not committing fully to sales and learning sales as an art and not just taking sales as my job or, you know, prof, you know career. So why don't we, why don't you help us with your experience that, um, well, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen people uh, making is when I'm conducting a lot of interviews for sales folks, uh, I ask them this question, which is really, really an eye opener for a lot of people and it validates my thought as well. So I ask them, so what kind of investment have you made in yourself building your sales skills and who do you follow as a mentor or an idol in sales? And, and not with no surprises, 99.9% .9 people say, hey, I don't, I don't do anything. It's only 
the company which has invested in me, I take those trainings. I've not read any sales book. I don't really have a sales mentor. And that's the answer that I, they just say that, you know, I just look at X, Y, Z guy who is my colleague. I just look at him and I just try to innovate. So what are you, what is, what is your take on this, John? Uh, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent. Uh, look, in, in my day, when I came up through IBM and NCR and so on, we had, the corporates had big training programs and they'd bring graduates in and train the graduates in how to be salespeople uh, and help them establish a career with the expectation they'd work 10 or 20 or 30 years in sales and management in one company. And of course, that doesn't happen anymore. The level of loyalty and commitment has disappeared on both sides. So we as individuals really need to look after ourselves. At the same time, the corporates out there I'm working with, I, I help them get around their, around their mind, they need to empower their people. Now, what does empowerment mean? It, 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 in my mind, it doesn't mean giving them everything they need. It, it means providing the environment by which that person can grow and develop. And a lot of the responsibility for that growth and development has to be with the individual. Um, so in my mind, absolute commitment to building your own personal brand. Now, that's got to be aligned with the corporate brand, but building your personal brand because what do people buy in these days? When you're out there working to uh, make a living as a salesperson, what are those people you're talking to? What are your customers buying? They're buying you. They're not buying your product or service. You're the person that's going to bring value through the conversations. And so if they don't buy you up front, they aren't going to sell any product, right? So yeah. personal brand is absolutely critical for salespeople. And you, they, every person needs to build domain expertise in an area of, of, of the, the customer's domain, and they need to be able to bring unique insight uh, through the conversations they have, through the questions they ask, and create value for the customer by doing so. And, in, and if you're going to do that, you've got to have a really good brand that shows that you have a unique promise of value around that specific domain. Yeah, I love it. I love it. In short, sell yourself first before you can, can sell your product or services. As in, you know, people should buy you, your personal brand, before they even think about considering your, 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 your product or service. Let me go back right to ask the question of your, of your listeners. Yeah, what do you think sales is? I, you know, I ask that question of just about everybody I come across. What do you think sales is? Just to find the word and what it means. Uh, and I, I'll give the answer before I, uh, before I get the question coming back or the answer coming back. The, the word sell, you might know this, uh, Dev, the word sell comes from an old English word, selan, S-E-L-L-A-N, and an old German word, selan, uh, S-E-L-L-E-N. Those words, the meaning of those words was to give. So selling is giving. And when you think about selling is giving, you've got to think about what I have to do, what, what I have to give and how I'm going to give, and I've got to have the right attitude, right intent around what I'm doing, and the intent's got to be for the customer, generally and with authenticity. It's not about I'll pretend I'm giving to the customer so I can get, get their money or you know, sell a product. It's but you really authentically have to be there to give, create value for the customer. Uh, and so right back at the very beginning, it's getting that intent right and an understanding that selling is giving, selling is helping, selling is not closing orders. Wow, that's, that's really beautiful. I think they're completely aligned with what your thoughts are and um, I also completely agree with it. I didn't know about this word of uh, Salan, so thank you for sharing that. It really makes complete sense. And I think, you know, if people can keep that in mind, for sure, they will start, you know, getting more successes in their business. And once they have more success, they will start enjoying their job more. If they start enjoying more, of course, they'll be more successful. So it's like a vicious circle, which is definitely beneficial. So I think brilliantly said. So let me just jump into my next important question which the viewers may be thinking right now as to okay great so if i've been in sales let's say i just started my career in sales or i'm just maybe two or three years in sales 
what are the things that I should keep in mind? Number one, which all you already mentioned is sales is all about giving, right? That's number one. Number two is you need to be your own brand. You need to start selling your own positioning yourself before you become, you know, uh, uh, some somebody like a salesperson or selling your product. What are the other aspects which people should extremely, extremely pay more attention to it and really work on it to become master at sales? I, I think um, sales process is vital. Understanding how buyers buy and then understanding how the process you need to go through to help them buy. You're, you're, our job as salespeople is to help customers buy, to help customers solve challenges and issues, right, and make decisions about how they're going to do that, which will entail some level of buying. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, understanding the process we normally go through. So sales process you know, is absolutely vital. Uh, and there's a few key steps, every sales process, there's lots of different sales processes out there people define, but the, these activities have to be absolutely key. One is, how do you engage in the first place? That's the first step of the process. And there's yeah, all sorts of ways in which you can engage with people, um, multiple through multiple channel, channels with you know, emails and, and social and telephone and, and, and so on. But the way in which you engage with that level of authenticity and I, I'm here to help is around bringing value to the table, even in engagement. Uh, then, of course, the second step in the sales process is discovery, um, making sure you've researched enough in the first place. But when you're in front of the customer, you are there to ask questions. You're there to, to, to help the customer understand the challenges and issues they got, maybe from a new context by bringing new insight to the table and then taking them through a thinking journey that, that enlightens them on the different options and opportunities they've got of addressing their problem. And by the way, everything I've talked about so far in the engagement and discovery, absolutely critical in my mind, you never discuss you, your company, or your product once. It's not about that. It's about the customer. So if you're engaging properly and you're engaging with, but by really talking about things of value to the customer and then you're going through discovery, ultimately to determine what they can do to address their challenges and what value that would drive for their business if they address that. Now, a lot of people think about the next step is value proposition in that sales process. So you need to go through these steps in that linear. But when they get to value proposition, a lot of people think it's a value proposition of my product. But no, it's not. You're, when you have, when you talk about the value proposition, it's all to do with the customer. If the customer was to address their problem in this way and change the way in which they do business in this way, what will be the value that they will derive out of that? And you haven't mentioned your product once. Mm. Right? So, this is the transformation in thinking that I'm, I'm working to get help a lot of organizations and individuals. It's all about the customer. And that means you're not discussing your product until you've gone right through multiple steps of the sales process and the buying journey to the point where, yes, okay, the customer now agrees they want to drive that change in their business. How can you help us drive that change? What can you do to well, okay, let me talk about some of the things we can do. Now you can talk about product. But they're already sold on the fact they need to go through the change. They already understand the value of that change without you ever discussing your product. Yeah. that's that. A, a lot of salespeople that have been out there selling for a while have a lot of trouble because all they know is I've got a product and I need to talk about feature function benefit of my product. And right. that's gone with the arcs. If you're selling that way, you've got to change. or you're not going to survive. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, I, I was that person. I can completely relate to it because when I was, <laughs> we, we've all been there. Yeah, when, when I was not enlightened and when I was not really exploring sales as really a profession and when I was just taking sales just as a job, at that time, I did exactly what you said. I, I made all those mistakes, you know, as talking about my product, my services, how wonderful, how great I am, and it did not pay off well. And I can completely relate to it. Yeah. Customers don't want to know. They don't want to know about you. They, haven't, they don't want to know about your product. They want to know about how they can improve their business. And that's not your product. That's the way they change thinking or address a problem or a challenge. 
ultimately, if they make that decision, they're going to address it and, and, and they can see the outcome, now your product might fit and help them do that. Sometimes it doesn't, by the way. You can go through a sales process and they end up deciding that they want to address a, a problem in a certain way and your product's not going to help. Well, guess what? It's time to say, look, I'm going to let you go now, Mr. Customer. I hope you've created some value for you, but I don't think I can help you solve this problem. Guess what happens next time they have a problem? You'll be the first person they call. You're authentic. You're, 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 it's all about them, not about you. You're not there to sell a product. You're there to help them overcome their business issues and challenges and move forward. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. I think hardly very few people in sales, they usually back off from the deal. They try and you know push through and then try and commit to it. You know somehow try to close the deal. You know, not not really figuring out whether it will really be able. They will be able to serve or not. They usually I've seen people saying that yes, man. You know yes, we can do it. Absolutely, we got it. In the back of the head, they know it. And I need to figure this out. You know, I'm not sure if you'll be able to serve. I think this is the biggest mistake you know people have done. And I, I for myself, I'm a culprit. And I can completely resonate what you're just saying that bring value to others and do not talk about yourself. So for people who are watching, before we started the live broadcast, you know, I said, okay, we're gonna talk about you, your business, and he said, so John said, no, 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 we're not talking about my business, we talk about how we can bring value. So you're living it, so I'm really, really impressed. <laughs> well, we got to, we have to. I mean, you, you just count the number of times that a salesperson's tried to sell to you, and they come straight in and say, you have, have, you need, have you got a need for X? I've got a product that fits that, right? Bang, and from the very second sentence, they're, they're talking about their product. I'm suggesting to most salespeople, try and have a half hour, one hour meeting with your customer, walk away and set up another meeting and never ever mention your product in that first meeting. There's the challenge. Because if you get your mind around that, you really start selling. So the next skill, and you said, what do people have to learn? The next skill is the skill of conversation, the art of conversation. And, and to, as a salesperson, you know, the, we're not going to teach all those skills here, but, but, but essentially you need to have the ability to know how to ask questions, um, know how to interact, be in the moment with your customer. And by the way, anybody that uses a script to sell can never be in the moment. So you need to learn how to have that conversation without scripts or even for that matter a lot of people said i'll prepare all my questions and i'll go into the meeting and i'll then have my questions well guess what after the first question you'll go down a path and the rest of questions don't make sense anymore so you have to have that skill to have a conversation and be in the moment with the customer and bring value through the questions you ask. You, the, the questions need to have insight behind them where the customer's, oh, that's a good question. Let's talk about that more. And, and, and through the questions you ask, they see that you have the domain expertise and the value you're going to bring to the table. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I heard of this rule called uh, Pareto's 80-20 rule. Um, some of the some of the guys they ask the question, how does 8020 apply in sales in, in what different ways? So can you help us understand, you know, what is the 8020 in sales? <laughs> well, 8020 can be applied to just about everything you do in life <laughs> uh, and, and everything you do in sales. A key 8020 is, is to think about how much do I talk and how much do I listen, right? Mm -hmm. that old 80 20 um, particularly um, in, in the early part of your sales process. And it depends what you're selling. Sometimes the whole sale happens in one call or one meeting. Uh, my history is most of the sales I'm doing, it's a four month or six month or eight month or 12 month lead cycle going from first contact to when you get a commitment. Uh, so I'm not that familiar with the one call sale uh, that a lot of people say, the commodity type, the transactional type products. Um, but the, the, the reality is either you've got to be focused on the customer uh, and the 80-20 is I need to ask questions and encourage the customer to talk. So they should be talking 80% of the time. You need to be listening 80% of the time. Yeah, beautiful. I, I completely agree. And I think, you know, if we, if we spend more time doing that, by just doing that itself, spending 80% of the time listening and then 20% only talking, and that really changes a lot of game. And 
And I think, you know, for people who are starting in this type of uh, mindset in 80-20, I think it's really difficult initially to, you know, be 80% of listener because historically, typical way of selling is, you know, we are notorious as a salespeople when we start in sales new, we talk 80% of time, we only let customer talk 20% of the time and that's more hilarious. You know, there's, there's, it's a very interesting thing. Years ago, I learned the lesson when I was hiring people for sales and, and we used to think, well, we need people that are gregarious and, and you know, can talk a lot and, and so on and so forth. Uh, it, the fact is that uh, introverted people are sometimes the best salespeople because not so, not so much shy people but introverted are more interested in knowing about the other person have a higher level of EQ typically, whereas the gregarious person tends to talk over people and, uh, and, and therefore haven't got that empathy and EQ you need to engage properly with people. So uh, you, know, you and I are talking here quite gregariously uh, and I'm probably talking over you a little bit occasionally, so I apologise for that, but the reality is when you're in the sales environment, good salespeople are the quiet ones. Good salespeople are the ones that can listen carefully and then respond with a, another question, saying, that's very interesting, Mr. Customer. I had an experience uh, with one of my other customers where they had this challenge. Now, do you have that sort of challenge and tell me how it, all, it, it plays out in your organisation? Now, what have I done with that question? I've showed I've listened, I've brought some insight to the table and got him thinking down a certain path that might be of value to him. To that person so but I've done it very quietly uh, with empathy with, with high EQ in what I'm doing Wow that's beautiful and I would like to dive into that topic because I think this is so crucial if salespeople understood this part of spending more time on probing understanding and listening to the customers problem I think 70% of job is done and you know, people have already differentiated. So what kind of questions do you think you know, we should be asking or what should be our approach when we are trying to understand their pain or problem or challenges? So what sort of questions should be the ideal ones? Well, you know, you've got the old adage of open and closed questions, right? So um, you, you will see that I, I do, I interview lots of thought leaders and I, I've interviewed and published just recently one with um, a chap that talked about um, the, the seven words that are critical to sales and of course they're the how, why, when and where and so on. So to learn how to sell or learn how to engage with a customer, it's very important that you, you have one of those words at the top of the tongue. So when the customer says something, go in and, and use one of those where, how, and so on. And, and, and the rest of the sentence, if, if once you in, engage properly with a customer, will come. So it's getting practice, a lot of practice at engaging through the questions you ask. Um, that's absolutely vital. The, the, the second one, that, that example I gave you before, um, in, in the way in which you respond to something the customer has said in a quiet sort of way, it, it, you, you, there is no value to the customer if you don't have insight that's unique and valuable that you can bring through the questions. But the challenge that a lot of customers have is, I have knowledge that I think this customer will get value. I'm going to tell the customer. Uh, and the, and that, that, that you're much better off if you, you ask a question. So the question I just mentioned before, if, if, if you've, the customer said something and, and you have a bit of insider knowledge relative to what they've said, or you want to start them down another thought process, so that's very interesting related to that. You know, I've got this experience or I've read this research or, or whatever and I'm, I'm interested to know how that might apply to you because in looking at what you're doing and what you said, I think you, you, know, you're, you've, you could get value of taking some thought down this. What do you think about that? Tell me how that might, might apply in your area. So it's learning how to ask those questions that are open-ended questions through and, and, and doing it in such a way you're bringing insight through the question that creates credibility for you and value for the customer. Yeah, I think that's the one of the biggest, biggest takeaway. I think it should be one of the most important takeaway from this interview today. So I completely agree with that. So why, why don't we just quickly take a question? I also have some question, but Ankush, uh, Ankush Dubey, he asks the question that 
how to handle customers who say not interested in first five seconds of the call when you start a cold call? <laughs> It's an interesting. Well, first of all, I'd like to understand how they started that call. Right? <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I get into a lot of debate about the value of cold calls and, and whether call, calls should be cold or not. Uh, and I have, you know, we've got, we run forums here and we have all these discussions about that. If you're making a cold call out of the blue to somebody, they don't know you, you don't know them and you know nothing about them, how can you create value in that first sentence? Right? So, I know it takes time, but we need to research our target customers. We need to understand some issues and challenges they might be facing. Uh, now, how do you get that? Well, you need to do your research. You need to, you know, we use LinkedIn a lot. We use, uh, we look at different triggers that, that might be occurring in the marketplace. Um, you, you could use social media, you do all sorts of different things, but you need to have some insight that will give lead to that first statement. Now, here's an example. Um, colleague of mine, Steve Hall, brilliant, uh, brilliant at, make, at, at, at making calls to CEOs that he's never met before, right? Uh, and here's a case study. He was asked by an organization who was a software company selling dig digital services and software uh, into different industries, and they, they were entering the Australian market, US-based company. So they came in and said, well, we, we, we want to sell to retailers. Uh, and Steve, Steve said, well, yeah, okay. What value do you create with retailers? Well, we do anything. We, anything digital, we do. And, but that's not the answer to the question. What's the value that a CEO would get value from? So they talked about it. And ultimately at that time, which is about five years ago, four or five years ago, most uh, retailers were fighting the online retailers, right? Most, most uh, bricks and mortar retailers. Yeah. Uh, and so the top of mind challenge that the CEOs were facing is, how do I respond to this competitive challenge from the online retailer? And so, he would open, uh, do some research and make sure that he understood that organisation, use a little bit of their jargon if necessary, and open with a statement that said, I'm ringing because I want to talk to you about how you, uh, I've got some ideas that might help you uh, compete against the online retailers that are coming into the marketplace. Wow. Now, you get some people saying, no, not interested, but, if, but most CEOs that that's top of mind will go, ooh, okay. I just want to know a little bit more before I hang up on you. <laughs> uh, and, and, and from there they say, okay, let's set up a meeting. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll bring some ideas to the table. I think um, you know, we've got a party we're working with here, working with it. The important thing is, and I'm talking about selling the meeting here, not selling a product over the phone, but selling a meeting is a sale. It, it's really important that you, you don't give too much information and you just hit that value statement, right? Mm. I've got some ideas that might help you compete against the online retailers. The trigs there open the door. So I don't know whether that answers hit that specific question. It depends what they're trying to sell and how they're going about it. Yeah. But it's really important you get to that value statement and that value statement matches what you know is going to be top of mind of that person you're calling. Yeah. No, I think this is brilliant and this is... This is amazing. It's a lot of learning for me as well. Um, and, you know, using the, the value statement right in the beginning and knowing what would really impact the customer's business, what would bring value to them and laying it up front in first 10 seconds, I think it's so vital. And I tell this to, uh, you know, my followers that cold call, in a cold call, the first five seconds or 10 seconds, it's like an audition. You're going for a singing audition, dancing competition, whatever audition you're going, the judges will judge you in just five, first five, 10 seconds. So what's, what words come out of your mouth, it has to completely, completely resonate with what they're doing and what's in it for me. Well, it's even before the words come out of your mouth, Dave. Uh, 
let, let me i've got a uh, one of the people i interview and all, all the people i interview all the, the videos are available on the, on our youtube channel so free of charge for everybody to go to one right. i interview is ian Lowe, and ian talks about the, the culture of purpose and and having the right intent and all that sort of stuff and one of the things he talks about is the the gut reaction the first impressions and the point he makes, uh, which I didn't know until I, that he told me all about this, is that we've got three brains. We as human beings, beings have three brains. We've got a head brain that we all know about, right? Mm -hmm. We've got a heart brain and a gut brain. And the thing I didn't know is there's more neurons in the gut than there are in the head. Wow. So when we say people get a gut feel, it's absolutely true. And so we need to think about not just the first word we say, but the, 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 the breath we take and our whole being and the way we're, and the intent we've got, make sure our intent is absolutely pure to helping and creating value for this other person. Even when we pick up the phone, it's, I need to create value for this other person. Um, the, the research has shown fighter pilots, for example, the top fighter pilots will be flying along and suddenly divert and, and a missile goes past. They didn't even know it was coming. But something in the human uh, beings as we are through the, the three brains we've got enables us to sense things around us. So your customer, even as he's picking up the phone, is sensing something. You've got to get your intent right. And the whole thing from the very first word has to be about helping that person, creating value for that person. Wow, that's so amazing. And, and I really love the analogy which you shared about the fighter pilots having the gut feeling. I didn't know about these three brains as well. I would highly recommend people to check John's uh, YouTube channel as well. I'm going to leave the link to his channel in the description below. Beautiful, beautiful analogy. So there's, there's over there's over 200 interviews there. Most of them are about five minutes uh, with people like Ian Lowe. There's probably 20 or 30 interviews there with Tony Hughes, all on very specific topics. So you can search and decide what topic you're interested in. Going brilliant content. It's it's not mine. It's it's all the people I interview. Awesome, awesome. I think I think everybody should be able to take it. You know, you guys should be taking advantage. You guys, if you're listening, I highly recommend that you should go and check out the content and. And I'm sure you cannot resist from subscribing to it for sure that the brilliant content which is available for. I feel free. Right. <laughs> Great. So one last question I have, I think we've already maxed out our time, is how important it is to close a deal and what is it that somebody should be doing to close the deal and get the business? Uh, th this is... Uh a very, very important and interesting topic. Uh, I, I get calls all the time is, we're not closing enough business. Can you come in and teach my guys how to, how to close better? And when I go in, I say, all right, well, let me first of all go in and, and, and sit with them and see what they're doing and, and look at what sales process they're following and so on. And, the, and, and nine times out of ten, closing is not the problem. The problems in earlier in the sales process, they haven't done a thorough enough discovery. They haven't really identified the value proposition and got agreement from the customer that that is real value to them. Uh, that reminds me of another video um, in there where one of the guys I interviewed talks about making sure the customer, it's like sales is like a poker game. You get the customer to put the value on the table before you do. Hmm. Think about that mentality. It's a customer's value proposition, not yours. So if you draw him out to that value, him or her, then that's real value and they understand it. Now if you have something to deliver that value, it's a, a, it's, it's a purpose. It's it's of a, a high value to the customer. And I've just suddenly long, lost my line of thought. Um, closing. So as you go through that sales process, you've got to do all that properly. And when you do that properly, Closing cut becomes very natural. You're not trying to manipulate a close. You're not trying to force a close. If you feel like oh, I'm trying to try and close this guy now, but he's not really ready for the close, then you haven't done the selling through the process yet. You need to go back in the process. Mm -hmm. If the closing comes natural, you know, I'm to the point now. It just seems the sale, the, the customer will almost be there saying, you know, 
give me the opportunity to give you a commitment. I want to go ahead with this. And so, right, are you ready to commit now? Let's go. There is no science about closing other than you've got to do your selling up front and closing then becomes very natural. Wow. Wow, that's so brilliant. I think most of the people would agree unto this that most of the sales happens before even you ask for a sale. Now, that's so brilliant that, you know, before you even ask for a sale, the sales is already happening in customer's mind. That's and, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And if, if you're focusing on what's in it for them and understanding the value and drilling more into you know, what is it that is hampering their business, and if you're doing it that effectively, I think the most of the sales part is done. True. Absolutely. Great, great. So, John, really, really appreciate. I think I can go on and on and not even realize that we've already crossed 40 minutes. As you can see, it's my, it's my pet subject. I could go on and on all day. <laughs> <laughs> I have other things to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So, I will leave the link to your YouTube channel below and uh, any other place that they can, you know. Well, you the, the, if, you're a, if you're a true B2, business to business salesperson, um, I've got a group called the Strategic Selling Group on LinkedIn, so that everybody's welcome to go there. I do vet everybody, so um, if, if then people are not in sales or whatever, they'll, they'll probably say no. But if you're a genuine salesperson or sales leader, sales there's more sales leaders and sales managers in that group than there are professional salespeople. Please go and join the group, Strategic Selling Group on LinkedIn. Then the, there's a group resource center um, that's called the strategic selling group.com. So people can go to that uh, and all, you know, get access to all those interviews and so on. And then there's the YouTube channel, um, which uh, is strategic selling group. Uh, there's only one G in selling group. Uh, if, you, if you go and search for that, you'll find, uh, you know, there's 200 and something um, videos there. Most of them five minute short snappy interviews, uh, but there's also one we run um, Thought leadership forums every two months and we videotape them and all those videotapes are there too So you've got one from Tony Hughes for example and Graham Hawkins and and all the other you know Kean McLaughlin all the other guys that are really top guys talking on their pet subjects great value Awesome awesome guys. So if you're watching I'll leave all the links below in the description First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to subscribe to all those uh, groups and channels, and I I, I know how, how how I'm going to spend my weekend now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy your weekend, Deb. Don't don't spend too much time studying. <laughs> Take some time off. <laughs> thank you so much, John. It really means a lot. You're taking the time out from busy schedule, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is Scare Nation, and if you've not done this already, do subscribe to the channel and uh, look, watch out for the links to all the groups that John mentioned, do subscribe to them and commit, all right? The big, best part is commit to becoming the best. So John, namaste from India. Thank you so much for joining once again. My pleasure, sir. Thank you, take care.